Welcome back. This is lesson four of the origami design course. This is actually going to be the first video of a really long sub-series about box pleating in, in particular. Well, in this video, we're going to get into what is box pleating, why you should learn it, and some of the, and the basic outline of how it works as a method. Uh, we're not going to get, well, yeah. And then in the future videos, we're going to actually dive into the actual method, step by step how you do it, and other techniques along the way that are associated with it. Uh, before we get too into it, when we get through box pleating, uh, you must know how to do crease patterns. You need to know how to at least know how to fold your box pleated crease patterns. So if you don't know that yet, uh, make sure you check out Boyce Origami by Boyce. He has some crease pattern videos. Make sure you watch his box pleating videos because you need to know how to fold them before you learn how to design them. So, so in the context of all of designing, let's take a look. So in the last videos, we talked about uh, traditional bases, and then we talked about grafting. And traditional bases and grafting are, are pretty good. They can get us pretty far uh, by most, you know, simple animals and stuff. Can You can make do with just a, with a traditional base plus a graft, you, you'll be fine. But there's a limit to how complex you can get with a traditional base and a graft. For example, like a frog base has... Nine, what is it, nine flaps, right? Maybe you can graft on a few extra details. But what do you do if you have like the skeleton, which has, you know, 12 ribs plus a huge tail and a whole skull? In theory, you might be able to graft it, but it'll get, it's not a good, grafting is just for little details and little add-ons. You cannot, you cannot get by with just grafting a traditional base. So it turns out that you need box pleating for something like this. And as it turns out, box pleating is actually way more useful than any traditional base plus grafting thing and it's used by um, myself I use graft box pleating as a primary thing so for example these these three are pretty uh, pretty good examples like the shark skeleton is the basic packing concept the knight is box pleating with color change and the stone golem shows level shifters pretty well uh, even like Satoshi, Satoshi Kamiya he uses box pleating so this is his uh, region 3.5 that I folded but it's his design and th that uses box pleating uh, Kota Imai's insects, which I don't have any pictures of, but you can search them up. All of his insects are box pleated, I think. Yeah, so overall it's pretty useful. Um, you can design extremely complex things, like, you know, with box pleating, the sky's the limit. So it's worth learning for sure. So with that being said, what exactly is box pleating? So box pleating uh, is a type of crease pattern whose creases are all, or mostly all, at 90 or 45 degree angles. Let's look at our example crease pattern here. This is the shark skeleton. Now, most of the, so there's a few exceptions. There's these parallelograms uh, in the various spots. There's, these are called Pythagorean stretches. We'll learn more about those. And there's also a bird base in the corner. You can ignore those. But for the most part, most of the most of the creases, you know, they look like they're at, they're, you know, pleated. That's uh, the pleat in box pleat. So you see how they're all, they're all parallel lines here, all the parallel lines here. And then there's also these 45 degree angle lines too. So 90 degrees and 45 degrees. So that's the pleated. And then the box is that it's on a grid. So most of these creases lie on the grid. Uh, they're parallel or perpendicular to the grid. So that's the box and box pleated. So when you combine them, you get box pleated, right? Now, you don't need to know the specifics right now, but just be aware that there is axial box pleating and unaxial box pleating. So you don't need to know the difference right now. But for example, this is uh, the penguin chick crease pattern. This is actually unaxial box pleating. You see that most of the creases are on 90 degrees, 45 degree angles. But for reasons we're going to learn pretty soon, this is very different from the shark skeleton. Now by the end of this series, you should know all of these vocab. And you know, I hate to make it sound like school, but uh, these are words that I'll be using. Uh, they're pretty common terms when we talk about designing and box pleating. So you're gonna to need to know these. So why don't you take a look through the list, see which ones you know and which ones you need to be listening for when we talk about them. And uh, also these slides will be linked in the description since there's a bunch of stuff we're talking about. Instead of having to make you take notes, you can just take the slides. It's just like class, am I right? Just like class. Um, we went through box pleating, axial, BP, unaxial. We'll learn those later. Okay, so let's, let's now go over Let's now talk about the basic process of box pleating. So, in the previously we talked about traditional bases and we had some steps that we listed out there. None of that actually applies here. We're going to be completely different. When it comes to box pleating, 
this is a this is a uh, diagram from Robert Lang. I think is is in his TED talk. I think. I think that would be also that would be linked in the slides if you want to check that out. But uh, yeah, you see it says laying up here. This is his thing. Four step process. So you start with the subject, which for example he has this beetle, and then you make the tree, and then you make the base, and then you shape that into a model. So this is actually not box pleating. Like this looks like twenty two and a half method, um, and also it's a meme. Like you see, you know, easy. What the frick? How? But um, it, the general idea still stands. So uh, I just want to show you that I like this picture. To show you a more specific diagram that I made is a rough process outline. So we start with the tree, uh, which is which we'll talk about a tree, and then you go to packing, which we'll learn what a packing is. Then you turn your packing into a crease pattern, which we'll learn how to do. And I assume you know what a crease pattern is. These three steps are kind of the heavy lifting, the, the, the core of the process. And then after that, you fold the crease pattern, you shape it, and then it becomes your finished model. So these are um, these things you should already kind of know how to do. I'm not going to talk about these three steps down here. So this this uh, picture shows a pretty good um, is a pretty good visualization of the three processes. So the tree, uh, an example of the tree is in the top right. So what is a tree? A tree is basically a stick figure that the crease pattern will fold into. Uh, I think we briefly mentioned this before when we were counting flaps for traditional base. A tree is like a stick figure, but you actually have to have specific lengths associated with it. Let's say we wanted to get this shape. This is what I meant by the stick figure that the crease pattern will form. We had folded it. Here's the crease pattern, by the way. Right. The crease pattern folds into this stick figure. And let's say we, we were at the beginning of the design process and we wanted to get this specific stick figure. We would kind of draw it, we would, so we would go ahead and draw it out got my graph picker here and normally I would do this in Orihime but since I got this physical model I don't want to be switching back and forth I'm just going to hand draw it so we would write out we would actually count the lengths of each flap and uh, make it that many grid units so for example on top we have these two flaps and they are three units each so I would draw something like this and you know technically this hypotenuse is a little bit greater than three but it's close enough uh, and then we got this river here. We call this a river. Well, okay, so river is a packing term. We would call it a branch on the tree, but same thing. So it's the branch is two units long. Okay, and then we got this, okay, technically a leaf, but we'll call it a flap. So we got this flap that's uh, five units long. So we got this branching out five units long. Okay. And so see how I draw it on five grid, five un grid units, right? And then we got this river is three units long, and then th these are all four. These last ones are four. So let me just draw it like this because I'm out of space on the left, something like that. So all right, and then sometimes you know I'll just label the numbers if you can't see them. Okay, so this is our tree. So the packing is the arrangement of these flaps and rivers within the square. This this video's concepts are pretty important, so I'm going to make sure you guys understand it. So we're actually going to do a physical um, experiment, so to speak, to kind of understand what is a packing. So I think it helps if you want to understand how to design it from going from tree to pack into CP, maybe we should under go backwards and try to work our way back and see the connection between the three um, between the tree, the packing, and the CP. So we're going to kind of reverse engineer it, kind of. So let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and take apart this tree, literally, quite literally. Let me just commit some sacrilege right now. All right. So I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to cut off the flap. Okay. Before I do that, you see how each flap flaps around, right? And it's got these things called hinges, right? Um, it's as if it's on hinges, right? So hinge creases refers to like this crease here is a hinge, right? Because it's like, you know, you swing along the hinge. But also, you know, inside here, this is a hinge because this also is part of the, part of the swing. So when we cut, we're actually cutting along the hinges. And so we need to keep that in mind. So 
All right, RIP test fold. So here is our flap. And look at this, it looks like this little square thing. And it's a corner, it goes in the corner, right? So let's, let's just put it aside, let's kind of put it up here. Okay, let's cut off the next one. All right, so remember we're cutting on the hinges. And this one is an edge flap. All right, so you see that kind of? Let's go ahead and put that up here. So remember, so this whole thing was from the corner flap, and then this one was from the one next to it. Okay, and remember how they were on, they were both attached to this river here. So let's cut it off of the river and let's see how that looks. So the river is not a flap. That should be kind of obvious. But the river actually looks like this strip of paper. And magically, it goes around them like that. Isn't that pretty cool? They all kind of fit nicely together. Well, I mean, as nicely as you can get it after being cut like that, but you get the idea. So, uh, and what's cool about it is that everything above the river, so these two flaps are above the river, are above this strip here. And everything below it are going to be actually outside of it. Does that make sense? So these two three unit flaps that are, um, the river separates it, right? The river basically separates these three unit flaps from everything down here. So that's what a river does, kind of. Okay, now let's cut off our last one, or our last one on the top here, or next one, I should say. Let's cut off our next one. This one is also a corner flap, and this is five units, and it fits in nicely right there. So it's actually on the other side of the river. That's why it's not with these guys. It's actually separated down here a little bit. It's on the other side of the river. Um, all right, then let's cut off the next river. Okay, and this river just is go. It's this river does not bend. This river bent. This one doesn't. So it just straight goes straight across. And uh, so remember, I'll say it again. So everything uh, above the river, the river separates things. So the flaps on one side of the river are going to be on one side of the tree. So these, all of these guys, are on above this river. And all of these guys are below the river, so they're going to be down here below it. All right, now let's just cut off these last three ones. Okay. Now these are not normal flaps. These actually, well, these are, but you see how um, this flap looks very different from this flap. This flap actually has these two pleats on it which is actually okay, we can use that to just take up extra space. It's like a graft, kind of, remember like the graft? We did that in grafting, it's kind of the same thing. All right, so what you're looking at right here, these, these, uh, these broken pieces, you're looking at the packing. This is basically what the packing is. The packing divides everything up into flaps and rivers that are going to come together to make the tree. And the basic idea of the flaps and rivers, everything on, everything in the packing Everything on one side of the river, everything on one side of the river is going to end up above the river on the tree. And everything below the river is going to end up below the river on the tree. So I probably should have drawn this four hanging down, but oh, does that make sense kind of? How do we usually draw packing? So usually, um, so when you see red and blue on a crease pattern, usually blue means valley and red means mountain. When it comes to packing, uh, Usually, you know, people, it does not necessarily mean blue for valley and red for mountain, although there is some, uh, whatever. What we usually do is we say red for ridge crease. Let's write it out, red, ridge. And blue is hinge. So remember when I said that we were cutting along the hinges? So basically, these cuts, these are the hinge creases, okay? 
So let me go ahead and draw it in basically our cuts, basically. So we have this guy is a uh, four by eight. So here's this guy. And then the ridge crease, the ridge creases are these diagonals. Okay. And we'll learn about learn later about why they're called ridges, but basically the, they're the diagonals. So like that. Okay, then this guy, we'll just repeat the process over here. I'm just gonna go through it and draw all the ridges and hinges, and we'll see our packing. Okay, and then remember this is our river. So let's let me just draw in the river. Here's our little L shape, kind of, and then the river have, has these two diagonals. So let's we just draw in like that, and then we have this big corner flap on top, it's just one diagonal. So, like that uh, should use the ruler, and then these three unit things on top here. And here we go. This is so, this what we have here is called a packing. And you'll see this all over the place. So in BP Studio, which we'll learn later, you'll see this in the Tree Maker Circle Pleater. Um, you'll see this is the packing, you'll see it everywhere. So remember that these are the rivers and then these are the flaps. I'll, I'll try to overlay it like a puzzle almost. So if you can understand this, you can understand how these multiple pieces coming together and form a one one uncut square like we had in the beginning then you're on a good track to understanding the rest of the box pleating because this is the concept you need to know okay so that was a good reverse engineering of it of our little structure I think that was pretty good now in the next few videos we're going to actually do it the other way we're going to start with the tree and then we'll figure out how do you just get this packing how do you because I, I already had the packing, I already had this tree when we started. But how do you, you know, how do you go from this to this without f physically folding or cutting anything? So stay tuned for the next video. We're going to do an example of walkthrough of that.